voice and she said, you go around me and I'll go that way. And I go, yeah, okay. He just, that was just the way he, it all worked for him. He wanted to be, which, which he was aware of and I was aware of and did that. And he also liked to run lines, which was great. He's an old pro. All these old guys are old pros, you know. Run lines, run lines, run lines. But he was always kind of fumbling, you know. And if you watch him in the movies, that was his style, you know. And, and it was perfect because it was my style, too. So he was playing my father. Or in, in an episode where I don't know whether he's my father or not. Kind of like rolling with me. You know, he's not totally sure. I mean, look at him. He doesn't really look about him. He's not. He doesn't. He never did listen. So Fred is there. It's... So it's the first, and, we, and, then, and when we shot the show, we had all these people around, because it was a universal on this big lot, and the executives were bringing, it was very exciting, we had four cameras, and, and of course Fred Astaire is there. And, we, and we, when we got to do the final rehearsal before we filmed, Fred actually stumbled coming up the steps a little bit. He just did a, a little, he came up and he did a, a little, just a little like that. So the director said, oh, cut, cut, cut. Oh, was it? he was an asshole, this director. It was the guy that was, he was a former actor. He was the one bad guy we had. Oh, Dr. Casey, Ben Casey. Anybody know that show? That actor from Dr. Ben Casey. Yeah, you can Google it. Anyway, because it was kind of rude. I mean, here's this legend, and you know, just let us finish the rehearsal and then just do it again. No cut. But I, so everybody's a little embarrassed, Fred is there. And I said, oh, Fred, you're so clumsy. Now we got to do it again. And everybody, oh my God, you can't call Fred. And he laughed. He laughed so hard. He loved it. And that's when we became friends. Because I treated him like, because he hated fame. He hated having fame, being, having to, he was really, and he told me once, he says, you know, I rehearse 12 hours every day dancing. If anybody worked as hard as I do, they could have been as good as me. Which, not quite true, but... But he believed that, and uh, he and I could see it when we worked together. It was rehearse, 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 and it was it was very cute. And he was very cute. You wanted to hug him. He was kind of he had this helpless thing, and he would stumble. And we would do a scene. They say, "Oh, cut!" And and Fred would go, D "Was that all right, Dirk? Do you think that was all right? Was that was that all right?" Was that yeah, Fred, I, that's good, Fred. Fred, just stick with me, Fred. You'll have a career yet. <laughs> So humble, and he had a girlfriend who was a jockey, a very famous jockey, Robin Smith, and she just won at Hialeah that year. She won Jockey of the Year, so I hold them. And he was crazy, but he was my age at the time. He was 73 or maybe 74, and I thought he was really old. But he wasn't doing spirit, obviously, and he wasn't in, you know, and he looked young, and he was, he was full of. Uh, he was fascinated because in those days I jumped rope for an hour a day. So on lunch break I would just jump rope. So I'd be jumping rope outside the sound stage, and he'd see that. That really blew. That really. Well, that's one of the reasons we became best friends because he was. A, he loved that. Amazed by. Ama absolutely amazed. That I'd jump for. Well, I'd go 45 minutes, but I could jump forever, and I would just jump. So he a couple times he took the rope. I wish I had films about it, but he and he because he could jump like crazy. Most people can't jump rope. First, especially he just got and did it, and he did the double jumps and the crossovers and all that. So, uh, yeah, Fred. I, so I loved it. So anyway, I, if you watch that episode, Fred Astaire, you look at it and you just see this seamless performance that's very touching, and you you can't take your eyes off it. And you see me, and compared to him, I'm kind of wooden. You can see me acting. I mean, I can. I go, oh crap. And I go, you know that son of a gun? He tricked me. You know, like, oh, was it okay? Was it okay? Do you really think? Because he would kind of flump and fumble. Could we run? And then he's flumping. And I know my life's like, so I'm like spitting him out and kind of cueing him, helping him. So I did this thing you never want to do. I kind of got on his side of the scene. It was sort of. Part of me while I'm acting is sort of making sure Fred gets through the speech, you know? Stupid. But he, and I don't think he did it on purpose, but, but, but I learned a lesson, I learned a lesson. And, and, and also he was, so he was very, very real, and I was not quite surreal.
I was sitting with him once, uh, and we're sitting in our chairs, and it was a soundstage about this size, only much, much higher. And 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 there, there, we got the Viper sitting there, and it had the gun turrets, and there was a Viper that was set so the gun turrets would fire, and when they fired, they made this loud sound that had a very kind of strange rhythm. And something had malfunctioned, so we're all sitting. So I'm sitting with Fred. I'm, I'm sitting like this, and Fred is leaning against a, like a, a thing like this, a backdrop, a backdrop like this. But he's leaning on the wing of the Viper, like this, behind with this. And he's leaning there like this, waiting. And I, I noticed him because he was totally kind of in the shadows. Nobody saw him. He was sort of out of it. He's kind of watching things go up. But the way he was leaning was so elegant. You know, it was like Fred Astaire. He just couldn't help it. Because he was just there like this. And it was like... And then the workmen got this, the, the guns firing. And this rhythm started. It went... And Fred Astaire, who I'm looking at, starts dancing. And the music stopped, and he stopped. So. <laughs> it was so weird. It was so weird. So, so anyway, I asked him. I, I, later, I said, hey, Fred, I saw you dancing over there. He said, oh, oh, yeah. He says, you know, that sound, that rhythm of that. He says, this is the way Hermes Pan was his choreographer. His Hermes and I, that's how I went. That's where, he said, there was something about that rhythm. I had this whole idea to do a dancing in space. I'm sitting here, I'm in this car, and that rhythm got me. He says, this is the way I work. I got this whole thing. And so, he says, if I hadn't retired, I tomorrow would be in the studio with Hermes and we'd be working on this. We'd be working on this. We'd start working. And we'd be working, working 12 hours a day. He told me when he quit, he had just quit dancing like three or four years before when he was 69, 60. He said, I was driving in to rehearse every day like I'd done for the last 40 years. And I said, what am I doing? Well, why am I doing this? And he turned around and called Hermes and said, it's over. Anyway, it, it's a, that's a great story about Fred, I must say humbly, because it's a side you don't, people don't know, and how he worked, and how he thought, and where it came from, and it was, it was all about repetition, 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 repetition. <laughs> Another question, and then, and then you guys all have to go home. You have children? Do you have mistresses? Do you have anything that's waiting for you? Do you have a life? Yeah, we all have a life. Before we go on to the next question, can uh, we just give a massive Liverpool cheer for Carl, who actually built that Viper over there? Oh, Where's yeah. Carl? Where is he? Carl? Yeah. Incredible job, dude. That's awesome.